Hey guys, it's Sid here with SVTPerformance.com and this is the 2021 Ford Bronco. All right guys, we've got a lot of ground to cover in this video. So we're gonna start off by just doing a little walk around inspection and tour of what this 2021 Cyber Orange Outer Banks two-door Bronco looks like. I really like the proportions of it. Uh, it could use some bigger tires, but you know, if I was ordering one of these, it would definitely get the Sasquatch package. But it would be uh, pretty similar to this. I would get a two-door hardtop. I think it looks fantastic like this. The uh, hardtop itself, very nice. I really like these tail lights with the uh, clear lens over red. It gives it sort of a 3D effect. Looks really cool. I like that. I like the Kicking Horse logo on the back. As you can see, we've been off-roading a little bit. I'll have that for you a little bit later on in the video along with some on-road testing. We'll get it up in the air. Do a little bit of off-roading on the beach. Lots and lots of fun stuff, including maybe a dyno run. So look for that in the video as well. And uh, some likes, dislikes, things like that. But basically, I just wanted to give you guys an overall look at it. Of course, with the Outer Banks package, you get the painted fender flares, that is, unless you get the Sasquatch package on it, you can get the painted mirrors. A few other little things, black painted grill, which looks pretty good with the white lettering. This one has the, uh, the base bumper on it, so it's sort of the plastic covered bumper caps, things like that. Has this uh, keyless entry pad. Would like to see that a little bit better integrated, but we've seen that on a lot of Fords. Opening it up, door panels are fairly utilitarian, but the important thing is all the spots where you would touch here, here, things like that, all your soft points, any place where you'd touch is a nice soft material. This has the upgraded leather seats. This is about a $2,000 option. They look really nice. They are manual, which I like. I prefer a manual seat because I don't need 30 pounds of electric motors to move me back and forth. A little tie bar in the front is plenty good enough. Uh, if I was ordering it, I think I would go for the, uh, the marine grade vinyl though. The leather looks really nice and everything, but I think, uh, at least for my use on a vehicle like this, I want the most durable option possible. And that marine grade vinyl is really, really good. Speaking of durable, all of the uh, dash, all that kind of stuff, it's, uh, it's made to be cleaned very easily. Should uh, hold up to getting dirty and being wiped off, things like that. Same thing with the door panels and all that. Very utilitarian, very useful. And I like that on this type of vehicle. Um, this is a kind of a unique feature, putting the uh, little elastic cargo carrier net there on the door panel. I mean, because they've designed this thing to come off, you don't want pockets and a lot of various things like that all through it. But they did give you a little area there, so that's nice. Here's a power windows, power door lock, huge windows on this thing, by the way, and very thick glass. Nice, unique setup. Had to throw my own floor mats in um, that I just keep around. If I was ordering one of these, I would definitely get the Ford uh, custom molded floor mats because you're going to be dragging stuff in and out all the time. I do like the grab handle here. I would prefer having one up here and here, but I understand why they didn't because if you look right there, airbag, 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 air. there's airbags all in this thing. So you don't want uh, those opening up and throwing a grab handle into the side of your head. So kind of makes sense why that's not there. But it does give you a nice point to grab onto getting in. Of course, you've got one over there and one down here. And one of the things I like that they're doing on the Bronco, they're being honest. They're putting just exposed fasteners. You know, if they look good. They're not just like little Phillips head fasteners or anything good hex head fasteners but they're exposed they're not trying to hide it because they're embracing what the roots of this vehicle is which is sort of a utilitarian farm tool but this one's got lots of nice updates we've got the big 12 inch screen in here it is an automatic uh, the 10 speed works really well in this they've got the tuning dialed in better on bronco than they do ranger and honestly i think it's tuned in better than it is on the uh, mustang as well probably second best tuning for Ford for the 10R80 next to uh, Expedition. Surprisingly enough, I think Expedition has better uh, tuning from the factory. 
Of course, you got your controls for your four-wheel drive, all your GOAT modes, all that kind of stuff. You guys have seen that before. I'm just going to go through this kind of quickly. I do really like the uh, the HVAC controls and everything. This is probably my favorite setup from Ford because it gives you the dual temperature readouts and nice buttons and knobs for everything instead of just, say, like on the Mach-E where everything is in the screen and you have to go poking around in the screen to find what you want. I would rather just have physical interfaces. Uh, other than that, my only real complaint inside that I've noticed so far after having this for about a week is uh, this material on the dash. It's a little shiny, so in certain light conditions, it can become a little bit distracting, a little bit of glare. But other than that, it looks great. I like the uh, texture on it. And I know that's one of the things that Ford has been uh, going for with uh, Bronco, Maverick, some of their newer vehicles, is if they're not using a material that has sort of a natural grain like leather, like leather has a natural grain to it, they're not trying to copy the look of a natural grain on this. They're just going with something completely unique. So this one's sort of like a diamond shaped pattern. Very nice. I think that's a good idea. You know, use your mind and creativity to come up with something unique instead of just trying to copy something from nature. You have your uh, locker controls, all, you know, all your various uh, features you'll get, depending on, say you get a Sasquatch or package or something, there'll be more buttons up here. But I do like the way they did these switches in that it's uh, rubber covered. So instead of just having exposed buttons, this is just all rubber. So very easy to clean, again, maintain all that. I like all the accessory points they put in here. Of course, this is one where you can mount GoPros and things like that. We don't have the bar that goes across in this one. And uh, because it's made for that, you have USB charging ports here in the dash. So that's super handy. Speaking of charging, you've got more USB ports hiding down here, plus a wireless charging pad. That's great. And then on the back of the center console, uh, AC charging and uh, more DC charging on your uh, USB ports. Back seat on the uh, two-door, I have the uh, headrest folded down, makes it easier to see out the back, which it does have halfway decent uh, rear visibility. And of course, you've got your speakers mounted to the roll bar here. S leg room, not terrible, not great, not terrible. It's the Dyatlov rule for uh, leg room back here. You know, could somebody sit back here? Yes. Would they really want to for long periods of time? Probably not. But I look at this thing as sort of like the four-wheel drive version of a Mustang, you know, horse car. Uh, Mustang seats are not meant to be used, or rear seats aren't meant to be used, like, full-time. Most of us will either delete them or just use them as a package tray. That's how I kind of see this one. I had these seats folded down most of the week, just using uh, the whole area as cargo. When I had uh, smaller SUVs in the past, that's what I did anyways. I never left the rear seats folded up. Just I always had them folded down. Moving on around to the back, this one does have the uh, cargo racks on it, optional. They're okay, I didn't really test them out. Forgive all the junk back here. Do have the nice little cargo liner. Door opens up, you have like a three position shock here to keep you from just slamming this thing wide open. That's kind of handy. And then if you want it to go way open, you can just push it like that. Decent amount of space back here for a two-door. Again, you can just pull these. You have to flip the front seat, the front bottom portion of these seats forward. And then this will just lay down. Gets a decent amount of room. I'll show you what that looks like. So with the headrest up, you'll just pull on this. Headrest will come down. Throw the seat forward. There you go. Like I said, seat bottom is folded up. And that gives you a decent amount of room right there. Honestly, uh, I would do a rear seat delete on this because I would never use the rear seats on these, but it is nice to have it as an option. Also, got a 12 volt power outlet. Another good idea on Ford's part, you got this blank spot for a plug here, plus this little nipple sticking out of the plastic. That's so when you take your top off, you'll have somewhere to put your washer nozzle and your grid heater plugs. Just plug them in right there on the body instead of having them just flop about. So, clever thinking there. Does have the uh, headliner 
kill a little sound deadening headliner for the hard top so uh, that's basically it I know you guys have probably seen a ton of these things already so let's get it out on the road go for a little ride so I know a lot of you guys have been waiting to get one of these things out on the road I certainly had been so let me just show you one of the things I really love about this thing right now check out this turning radius that is ridiculous and if you want let's go ahead and get us a little 0 to 60 run in here bring the rpms up to about 2200 seems good turbo 33 39 40 there's 60 in fourth gear not too bad actually that wasn't fourth gear that was 4000 rpms it's probably third gear but yeah not too shabby out of the little 2.3 liter eco boost i know uh, a lot of you guys aren't really looking to uh, race the bronco but it's peppy for what it is i mean this is a fairly heavy vehicle you're looking like between 43 4500 pounds something like that for these two doors depending on how you equip it i mean that's really heavy for a vehicle of such a small footprint but uh damn if it's not good it's so it's very well put together everything is no buzzing rattling or anything like that i do get just a little bit of wind noise from the hard top and my guess is it's probably the uh crossbars not actually the hard top or anything else itself probably those accessory crossbars but that's basically it everything else is really nice and super smooth in here ford really knocked it out on the steering the steering is very precise very well weighted uh, I have to really commend them they did a great job on that handling it handles much better than you think an off-road oriented SUV should now granted this one's just your basic outer banks it doesn't have the Sasquatch package or anything like that for the upgraded suspension so it's your basic suspension just has some Bridgestone Dueler uh, tires nothing crazy very comfortable around town handles curves pretty well for something that's you know top heavy and but it does great very comfortable on a trip these seats actually remind me and sort of the interior as well the interior reminds me of a mustang there's just a lot of mustang that comes through on this thing for me i don't know why it doesn't look like a mustang inside or anything but sort of uh just the front cockpit setup that feels very familiar to me these seats feel like s197 uh, mustang seats to me these aren't really the most comfortable seats i've ever been in and i could definitely use more bolstering in it but you know this is sort of your middle of the road uh package so this is, would be equivalent to like an xlt maybe uh one step above that maybe a lariat in an f-150 or something like that so you can't expect to have the really performance oriented seats or anything like that but these aren't bad brakes they work well there's nothing really to write home about uh, very similar to ranger brakes uh, if you've driven the new ford ranger as far as uh, mileage things like that you would get i've taken this thing on a couple trips one interstate driving you know 70 75 miles an hour i got 22 and a half miles per gallon on a uh, 500 mile trip that way another trip a couple hundred miles we went on that was mostly uh two lane four lane back roads no interstate got 25 miles to the gallon and i mean you're talking about a, a tall four-wheel drive you know 300 horsepower vehicle that's pretty good and this thing does have uh optional 427 gears with the locker so you've got some steeper gears than what would normally come uh with this package and uh they contribute to some peppiness i do uh, enjoy that but uh on road this thing would make a great daily driver if you're like me i'm very truck oriented i've had tons and tons of different fords as daily drivers f-150s 350s several different flavors of mustang and uh had some other off-brand smaller suvs and things like that back in the day that i loved this uh to me is just about the perfect daily driver you get so much utility you can haul a decent amount of stuff in the back towing ratings about 3500 pounds on this uh, two-door which is not the greatest in the world but not terrible uh 
you're really limited on these short wheelbase models as far as how much you can tow so that's no surprise there because if you get too heavy on the tongue wake this thing is just going to porpoise down the road and that's not going to be any fun for anyone but uh, you've got a lot of utility for your money. It's easy to take care of, easy to keep clean, it's easy on the pocketbook other than probably the purchase price because this one's stickered for like $49,000, which is pretty steep. I mean, I would definitely, if I'm gonna spend that much, I wanna get the Sasquatch package. And to me, if I'm gonna buy one, I want the new seven speed manual transmission. I haven't got to drive one of those yet, but I'm really looking forward to that. I'm hoping I can talk Ford out of one in the next couple months. But just getting around town and everything, it's just really tough to beat. I know these guys are probably staring at it right here as I drive by. And it, this thing gets a ton of attention. I can't tell you how many Jeep people I've had stop us when we were out on the beach with it or even at a gas station just wanting to see it, wanting to know about it. This will probably get you more attention than a GT500 Mustang from most people. It's just uh, Ford hasn't had a Bronco out in forever and there's a lot of pent up demand for this. And honestly, if you get in one and drive it, you'll see why. You got a decent enough amount of room. And no, it's not a full size by any means, but it's not a compact either. So decent amount of room, good utility, easy to maintain, take care of. All the soft points where your elbows are gonna hit are all, or touch points are all nice soft touch materials. Very comfortable. Plus, with this one, we've got heated seats, heated steering wheel. We've got a lot going on as far as equipment goes. I can't uh, really say anything negative about this other than things that I would change, but it would make it a completely different vehicle. I mean, if you want to hear some of that stuff, you know, that'll be in the SVT Performance Premium member video that I'll be putting up a little bit later. I'll put the link in the description below. If you're a SVTP Premium member, we'll have that kind of content for you on that one. But as far as this review goes, man, it's good. I'm very, very impressed. I would really like to try a two-door Sasquatch package with a manual transmission. To me, if I was going to order one, that's what I'd order. This, there's nothing that's wrong with this thing that I wouldn't be fixed with a little bit different suspension and tires and that's what the Sasquatch package is I mean I'm not even saying this needs the 470 gears that you would come get with that but I would welcome them because you know I use the old SN95 and new edge Cobra term that we used to throw around don't fear the gear it's a four cylinder small turbo four cylinder don't fear the gear go with the big gears on this you'll like it I know I do infotainment system is great uh i mean there's just ford knocked it out of the park i really don't know what i can say other than that we're going to take a look underneath this thing just to see how many changes they made versus ranger because this is sort of based on ranger but very loosely based it's uh closer to the ford everest that were available overseas and uh i think there's gonna be some surprises under there you guys want to check that out a little bit later in the video for now, I think uh, I need to do a little bit of off-roading. So this wasn't the off-roading I was talking about. We've got a little bit more of that later on in the video where we take this thing out on the beach. But this is a nice dirt road and it'll give you an idea of what it's like to ride this thing on less than perfect pavement because that was a pretty good road we were on back there. So let's just cruise down through here, doing 35 miles an hour. And you know, this is just, a fairly decently maintained dirt road through South Carolina. You'll see a lot of these. Uh, this actually goes out to uh, Sand Pit, Sand Quarry, so it gets a lot of heavy truck traffic. But, you know, I'm riding along right now at 40 miles an hour. It's perfectly comfortable. Yes, I mean, you can definitely feel that there's some movement going around, but it's not bad. That's one of the things I love about the suspension on this. It is firm, but not harsh. That's what I was saying with the Sasquatch package, with those bigger tires, with a little bit taller sidewall, it would really soak this stuff up. You, you gotta think of the difference between a normal F-150, say an FX4, and a Raptor. That's gonna be your difference there. And of course, the Raptor Bronco coming, that's gonna be even more impressive. So this is, this is not bad, just to cruise around. You can imagine if you're on a rough road somewhere, it's gonna be sort of like this. Completely comfortable. And you see this guy up here is grading this road now, so. Not bad at all. I uh, think that'll just go ahead and conclude the, uh, the on-road portion of this. And uh, we'll go ahead and let's go to the beach. 
So I know what a lot of you guys have been waiting for, and that's a little bit of off-road action. So we've got an Outer Banks model. What better place to take it than the beach? Up here in Carolina Beach, North Carolina. Nice loose sand. Four-wheel drive only beach, of course. And uh, got the thing in four-wheel high. Diff locked, we're in sand mode. Uh, which keeps the RPMs up, which is really handy in sand. This, this kind of stuff I uh, grew up running in loose sand like this, deep loose sand. And the key is momentum. And if you feel like you're losing momentum, you hunt a set of ruts like this. But if you want to get fun, you can always get out of them and start breaking through new deeper sand. But the sand mode is pretty good, at least I think, because it keeps your RPMs up. doesn't want to shift into a higher gear. So right now we're running at 3,000 RPM at 13 miles an hour, which is perfect. You're right in the torque band for this 2.3 liter EcoBoost. It's keeping the wheels turning, but not turning too fast. And you always have plenty of power on tap when you need it. If you start to bog down, just feed it a little bit of throttle. Let the tires eat. They'll do their job. They'll find some traction. But you always got to be working on that steering wheel too looking for the most traction so if you start bogging down see right there it picked back up you find a set of ruts where it's just a little bit firmer and you're good to go uh haven't got to do any mud or mountainous off-roading in this bronco yet but this kind of stuff she's eating it up i mean the only thing you would ever really want for this is maybe bigger tires like the sasquatch package where you've got a wider tread but this Outer Banks model with just the standard tires it comes with, which are uh, Bridgestone Duelers, it's not having any issue at all, especially in the sand mold. So this one is your basic run-of-the-mill Bronco with the rear locker. We have 427 gears, and she's eating this stuff up. Not a problem in the world. So uh, I would definitely recommend it for this kind of duty. And the other thing that's great about it is the steering is just so good. I mean, you guys saw in our on-road review the steering is spot on and it's just so responsive and this thing is the perfect weight as well you have perfect balance basically in this two-wheel drive i'm sure the four-wheel drive is even better because a lot i mean the four door sorry the two door is fantastic because of its balance the four door is probably even better in an off-road situation like this where wheelbase helps and having that longer wheelbase but uh weight wise this thing is not too heavy not too uh, lightweight it's able to put the power down where you need it i'm just now getting a little bit of axle wrap really trying to push it through this heavy deep uh, sand trying to really induce it to do something crazy and it's not it's just it just goes through it ford really did a good job tuning in these goat modes at least the sand one that i'm playing in now and i came out here in normal and it was fine too but the sand one definitely is better for this particular environment just because like i said it's holding a low gear and allowing me to run my rpms up it's perfect i mean what more could you really ask for the thing looks great runs great on road off road it's killer i mean just absolutely killer for this if you were looking for a vehicle to just go out on the beach on the weekend or something this really shows off how well balanced and thought out this new Bronco is because even with the basic suspension package, nothing super fast. doesn't have the Sasquatch package, which, you know, is the lockers and all that kind of stuff. We're running 10-speed automatic, so we can't select our own gears, which we could. I mean, I could put it in manual mode, but I'm letting the transmission do its job because I want to see how Ford tuned it, and it's good. So uh, I would expect nothing less. For as amount of time as it took for them to build this thing, it came out right. You can see it hit some ruts, didn't upset it. And even in this soft sand, still having no problem turning. Watch out, bird. Yeah, this thing is on point. Now, of course, your fuel mileage is gonna suffer a little bit, but that's no big deal. And the other great thing is in off-road modes, you have the screen showing you your angle of your tires, your yaw pitch, all that stuff. I mean, it's so comprehensive, very impressive. It's 
really a vehicle that I've been waiting for from Ford and they knocked this one out of the park. I mean, the only way I could see it getting better is if I had a manual transmission, which you can get. Uh, if I was personally ordering one, that's what I'd go for. And uh, of course I'd want the Sasquatch package because why wouldn't you want the biggest tires? Just to tell you how deep this sand is, it actually hit the front skid plate right there. I heard it tap on it right there. It did it again. Let's see if I can hit it again here. Yep. You hear it just dragging that front skid plate. That's how deep this uh, sand is in certain spots. So, like I said, this one doesn't have the really jacked up suspension like a Sasquatch, but it's still high enough off the ground, you know, that you can do some fairly serious off-roading, but even in this, you know, we're, we're tapping that skid plate, so it's really nice to have it there. And like I said, this thing is having no problem at all just chewing up this sand. But I think we're going to leave it there, guys, and uh, let's go uh, put this thing on a lift and see what's really going on underneath. Well, we're back at Pro Dino, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Paul, Dan, and the guys invited us to come up and borrow the rack, put the Bronco on that, plus the dyno. So have a dyno video for you here in a little bit. But we wanted to give you guys a look at what's going on underneath the new Bronco. So first impressions, this thing is built pretty damn heavy. See nice size bolts on your uh, tow hook here. The uh, hitch fully welded into the frame, like I said before, fully box frame, so that's nice. Box cross members, got the one gigantic muffler in the back which is nice, it's up out of the way. Got a good kick up right there going over the axle, so you should be able to get a decent amount of articulation out of that. By the way, they're calling this a Dana 44. Uh, I wouldn't call it so much that, because uh, it's really sort of one of the new Advantech uh, metric Dana axles. But they've decided to call it a 44, and honestly, Dana has changed what they call a Dana 44 over the years so many times that you can't really even mix and match Dana 44 parts, so you really have to know the exact application you're looking at, and that goes back for many, many years. But it is a Dana axle. You have some very, very beefy control arms here. These lower control arms are very nice looking, and check out the hardware on all this. Your shocks, control arms. These bolts look like they're straight off F-150. This looks like a Super Duty bolt on your uh, coilover. By the way, yes, it does have coilover shocks, but the size of that bolt, very nice. So they definitely heavily built this thing. CV style uh, drive shaft, of course collapsible drive shaft for safety purposes. But CVs on both ends, so that's nice to see. Get a lot of articulation out of that. And as you can see, there's a ton of droop on this rear end. That's very nice. Six bolt axles course or six lug axles I should say six lug wheels nice skid plates on fuel tank this one does not have a skid plate covered transfer case I think that's a little odd I would like an option for a uh, manual shift transfer case I like having a lever in the floor I'm a caveman kind of like that but uh, I get why they didn't. They want to have all of the uh, drive modes and everything so the thing can just shift it in and out of four-wheel drive and four-wheel low and stuff like that on its own, depending on what setting you want. I'm kind of one of those people I like to do it all myself. Got your upper control arms here, all very nicely made, all well integrated into this very heavy frame. Looks like there's good coating inside the frame. You can actually see inside right there but that's sort of open typical EcoBoost exhaust this is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost fuel fuel actually is going across this top cross member here go into the fuel tank got your charcoal canister on top one of the few complaints I have about this is it does only have a 17 gallon fuel tank and that's I would prefer 20 gallons but you can see at 17 gallons it's taking up pretty much all the room that can on this uh, 
short wheelbase two-door model and it's not really sticking down that far below the frame rail it's only maybe uh, four inches so not too bad you sort of see the cross-sectional thickness of that frame right there that's nice CV style front drive shaft as well. It's got an exhaust crossover right here underneath your 10R80 transmission. Looks like it was built in April of last year. Downpipe with looks like just one massive cat, sort of like we were used to seeing with the uh, EcoBoost Mustangs. See, this motor has seen some, uh, some mud use. We didn't really get in any mud, we just stuck with sand. Same with the transmission, kind of dirty up in here. But is what it is. Big aluminum motor mounts, and it looks like they're on the uh, sort of hydraulic style motor mounts from Ford. Nice twin piston brake calipers in the front. CV shaft for your half shafts here. A big aluminum lower control arm. It's a very nicely made piece. Reminds me of a Raptor see an Raptor Bronco come out soon. You can see you can adjust your settings on your suspension, change your camera, all that kind of stuff. Important, especially if you're gonna be changing out uh, springs, wheels, tires, things like that. Knuckle is a cast iron piece. That's definitely heavy duty. I'm surprised it's not aluminum because they've been using so much aluminum in uh, other parts, like the upper control arm, that's aluminum. Very nice coilover front. This one is a plastic, I can't really call it a skid plate. And we were sanding this a little bit on the beach. But it looks like somewhere up in here, oh there, you can see the back side of the intercooler. Not a huge intercooler, but not tiny either. And the bottom side of those fans, those fans are really nice on this thing. I expect those will be a popular uh, snag for people in the future in the junkyard. We've got this big plastic piece here covering up your front axle. It's uh, made by Dana. It's an M190. Uh, I forget exactly what to call it, the front drive unit or something like that. It's your front axle. Uh, the 190, of course, stands for 190 millimeters because that is uh, the size of the ring gear. We got a little gutter here for your oil, because you've got the oil cooler here on the side of the engine. And way up in there, you can see you got your oil filter, and that is gonna be a huge pain to get to. I guess you can sort of reach it if you bend this uh, in the wheel liner out of the way. But it looks like it's made where you'll sort of have to reach up this way to change the oil. I'm thinking that is the factory oil filter. This thing has about 6,000 miles on it, so they may not have changed the oil in it yet. But that is a good size, you know, engine coolant cooled oil cooler. And of course, once you spin that filter off, the any oil that's in it will drain down here, and then it'll undercoat your carriage so you don't get rusted out. Got these uh, safety kickoffs are welded completely through the frame here. These are very nice. Ford started adding these, I forget exactly what year on the F-150. And the way they're designed is if you get into a frontal offset crash that pushes this tire back, instead of kicking up into the wheel well where it's gonna break your legs and ruin your day, it'll hit this and sort of kick the tire out or down. Nice safety feature. And they've added them to the front as well to protect the front tire. But the really cool thing they did on Bronco is they made them bolt on. So that way, if you want to run a bigger tire or something like that, you're willing to give up a little bit of safety, you can just take that out without having to cut it off, you know, permanently modify your frame. So that's cool. It's nice that they've integrated things like that. It's your mount for your front tow hooks. Can't really see a whole lot here on the front end just because of the way they have all this plastic sheeting in the way. Of course, if you're getting a Sasquatch model or one of the other off-road packages, this will not be plastic, it'll be metal of some type. Where is the oil drain plug? Oh, so this thing is gonna have to come off to change your oil. 
because there's the drain plug. And yeah, that's definitely never been off there. So let's see what we do. Looks like you got a couple 13 millimeter bolts. Two more here. So that's not too bad. We can pull this off fairly easily. More adjustments for your suspension on the back. It's great to see that they're actually giving you uh, these eccentric bolts from the factory instead of you having to buy them like we've been doing forever on Mustangs. But that's pretty much it. This is pretty, it's a simple vehicle. Frame, body on frame construction. It's exactly what uh, we would have asked for out of a new Bronco. You can see you got the seam sealer here on the bottom. Bottom of your running boards that are just bolted right in to uh, the body. There's what your body mounts look like on this. It looks like a whole lot better style than what we'd seen on Super Duty in the past that would rot out. These actually look pretty damn good. Other than that, she's just a pretty simple vehicle, which is what you want out of something like this. There's not a whole lot of stuff running either way to get damaged under here. I mean, this wiring harness, I guess, could be prone to uh, a stick or something coming up, getting kicked up by the tire and hurting that. So you might want to try to tuck that out of the way if you're going to do some hardcore off-roading, but pretty much everything else is standard fare. If you mess around with Ford trucks much, you're used to seeing this kind of stuff. Nice ball joints that look like they'd be very difficult to service. Actually, maybe not, depending if uh, you can get this knocked out of the way. This might just be held in with uh, some clips. That would be nice if it is, and not just a pressed in piece. And we had to press in from the bottom. I don't know, I'd like to see how that's made, actually, from the factory. You may have to look at that at some point. But that's basically it. You got your rack and pinion tie rods here. Not a whole lot more left to see. She's pretty, pretty basic. Everything you need, nothing you don't. Just really glad that they finally came out with this thing because it really fills a niche that Ford was missing, you know, an off-road capable small SUV that uh, makes a great daily driver and also a weekend toy. This thing is basically an SUV version of a Mustang is the way I feel about it. You know, yes, you can drive it every day have a ton of fun and also uh, take it out on the weekends and have some real fun. I think we need to pull this thing down off the lift and let's go over and hit the dyno. So it's probably kind of tough to see, but we tried a few different things with this. Started out trying to do a seventh gear pull on the red here, and you can see it sort of dies about here. We've hit the speed limiter. So on the second pull, we dropped it down to fifth gear, and that allowed us to get a full pull in. Then we decided, well, let's try sixth gear. Sixth gear power came up a little bit over seventh gear. It was a difference of like three and a half horsepower. Torque came up about 20 pound feet. And this last pull was also in six gear. But at the top of the uh, RPM range, I started to cut out a little bit. And I'll have to go back and look at the video, but I'm pretty sure the electronic wastegate started to open up a little bit right in here. So that's just Ford doing some safety tuning. Basically, they want to try to keep these engines living in these uh, fairly heavy Broncos. But that's pretty much what you're looking at, about 235 horsepower, 285 pound-feet of torque to the wheels on the 2.3 liter EcoBoost. Well, guys, if you made it this far into the video, I want to congratulate you. 
And I wanna go over three things that I really love about this 2021 Bronco and three things that I would change. Not necessarily that I don't like, just something I would change. So the first thing that I think Ford really, really nailed it out of the park on with this thing is everything about the driving dynamics. The ride, the steering, the handling, all of that, even on this basic uh, Outer Banks package, which is sort of a middle of the road type package, um, they got that perfect. The steering is fantastic. It's firm, you get good feedback. I mean, especially for a truck, it gives good feedback. So they definitely got that right. And like I said, the handling, you saw that in our uh, road test portion. It just handles exactly like you would want it to. The ride is firm, but not harsh. There's not a ton of body roll, but some which you would expect from a sort of tallish SUV. Like I said, Ford really did their homework and got that one just right. Now beyond the ride and handling, another great part about this is the upgradability. As you can see, accessory ready, accessory ready. It's all over this thing. Ford really designed this Bronco to be upgraded in tons and tons of ways. So you can get a fantastic bumper just from Ford Racing, Ford Performance Parts, and you know the aftermarket has everything, even all right now available. New running boards, rock sliders, RTR, Vaughn and those guys have some really nice stuff, including lift kits. It is just made to be modded, which is great. Wish there was more tuning options, but hopefully that's coming in the future. For now, your only two choices, Livernoy Motorsports, which Dan and the guys there are great, or Whipple Superchargers has a tuning package for these as well. But if you guys are looking to upgrade for more power, definitely hit up the guys at Livernoy. And finally, possibly my favorite part about the Bronco coming back, Ford put a manual transmission in this thing. Now this one is an automatic, but the manual transmission is an option and that's crazy for a brand new vehicle 2021 it's not replacing any vehicle it's something brand new in the lineup ford gave us a manual and a seven speed manual with a crawler gear now i haven't got to drive that yet but give it a choice i would take a stick shift in just about anything and i'm very happy that ford gave us that now taking off from that manual transmission option, I'm gonna lead into three things that I would change. And the first one being, I think the manual should be available across the board in every trim level, every option package that they have. Sasquatch, two door, four door, outer limits or outer banks, you know, every possible option feature. I think they should just make that manual available across the board also with the bigger engines. I know that may take a little bit of reworking, maybe a different clutch, maybe some upgraded internals but to me it's worth it if you're going to go to the trouble of giving us a manual make it available across the board uh, if i was ordering one of these i would definitely want the manual and i'd want the bigger engine and i'd be willing to pay a premium for it it's just make it an option next something else i would change and i have a feeling sometime in the future this is going to happen i think ford left themselves a little wiggle room here i would change the front end styling ever so slightly and essentially what I would end up doing is making this look more like the first generation Bronco by recessing this front grille and then bringing out the hood and fenders a little bit and wrap around just like those first generation Broncos. I think that would make this thing look even better. I mean, the front end is not bad looking as it is, but it would look even more aggressive and at the same time more modern yet more retro if that grille was recessed just a bit. And the final thing I would change, and I get on the two door, it might be a big ask, is I would like to see a little bit higher towing capacity. It's 3,500 pounds, and that's two door and four door, which is kind of weird. I would expect the four door to have a little bit higher towing capacity just because the longer wheelbase can usually handle a heavier trailer, but they're both 3,500 pounds. I'd like to see 5,000 pounds, at least on the four door, Two door, I get it. If you start getting a little too heavy on that back end, that short wheelbase, your front end will start getting swirly. I get that. 3,500 pounds is plenty enough for this small two door short wheelbase. But on that longer wheelbase, four door, I'd like to see 5,000 pounds. And maybe in the future that'll happen. It's not a huge ask on that one, 
to get the payload rating up a little bit. I mean, this is sort of on a modified Ranger frame. And those things, I think, can go up to 7,500 pounds of towing capacity, even with just the 2.3 liter EcoBoost. So power is not the problem. It's likely in the suspension, which you've got nice soft coil springs. It's a compromise. Uh, so maybe if that was just a package, maybe a max tow package or something. I know the Ford engineers, those guys are smart. They did an excellent job on this Bronco. It wouldn't be too much of an ask to get a little bit higher payload rating. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for our review of this beautiful 2021 Outer Banks Bronco. Had a fun time in this thing. If you guys would like more information about it, please click the link in the description below. That'll take you to svtperformance.com where we have a full article with tons of information, pictures, everything that we've done with this thing over the last week or so. And if you would really like my opinion in depth on this, we have an exclusive video just for SVT Performance Premium members. I'll put the link in the description below. You have to be an SVTP Premium member to do that. I also have a link in the description below to where you can sign up to do that. But we just go much more heavily in depth with the kind of stuff that uh, I know those guys really want to know, get my opinion on every little aspect of this thing. So definitely check out those links. And as always, head over to svtperformance.com for all the latest news, reviews, and information on your favorite Ford powered vehicles. for another great way to spend your day you can take the Bronco for a boat ride beautiful 